What's going on everybody? Welcome to your third Next.js tutorial in this React series. This one we're going to be talking about static site generation. So taking a peek at the Next.js docs, you can see a good overview of the different options of what we can do for getting data. So the challenge is we want to request information from a database, but we also want to use a static site for speed and caching. So with Next.js static site generation, we will use this thing called get static props, which will request the data at build time ahead of a user's request. Then those values that are retrieved from the database or an API, they are going to be hard coded in the HTML that's sent to the client. This is known as a static site and it's fast and it can be easily cached by CDNs and by browsers. Now I know what you're thinking, well what about if data changes? You know, the data we request from the database isn't going to be the same forever. How are we going to put that data in the page at build time without that data going out of date? Now I understand your concerns, okay? But first off, calm down we can do various things to make the site have up-to-date data. And that's what we're gonna be talking about over the next few episodes. We have to build up to that. So step one is to get the information from a data source and have it displayed in the HTML, which will be sent as a static site. So that's the goal of this video, and we will be using get static props. So for a typical React application, what's going to happen is the structure of a page will render, and then the information will be requested from a database. Once you have that information, you can then loop through that data. But you can see we've had to do conditions to check if customers even exist, because on that initial page load, the customers have not yet been loaded in. With a Next.js application, it's going to look a little bit different, where we have this get static props, which will make the request. And then in our HTML, we can map through that data, very similar to a plain React application. A couple of key differences is that the data is going to be assigned to this props object, and we will also be guaranteed that the posts are already inside of that array at page load time. So we won't need to do a ternary checking against the value of posts. So enough talking, let's jump into our code. What we're going to do is we're just going to focus on customers for now. So I'm going to delete orders, which we were just working with as an example in the previous episode. And what we will do is jump into index.tsx, and this is where we are going to get all of our customer data. Now the way we're going to define this function is actually outside of our component. So you can do it above it or below it. And this is going to be an async function. So export async function, then the name get static props. So take this and type it out right here and then close this function. Now the end goal here is to return an object with a props property, which will also be an object. And then we can put our data in here. Now this would be an appropriate time to make a request to an API or you can actually query a database directly because this get static props function is only going to exist on the server. So we don't have to worry about any of this code getting leaked to the client. Any kind of keys or access tokens are going to stay on the server code. That means you don't have to work through an API. You can access a database directly using a connection string. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we already built a customer's API, which we're probably going to end up using or connecting to a database directly. However, for those of you who are just jumping in, we're going to start with some mock data to get an understanding of how this page works, which you can then easily replace with a query to the database. So we'll say customers and then define this as an array, and then we'll define a few customer objects in here. Now for the actual structure, I'm going to have a name property and we will also have an industry property. And we'll just give some values there. Let's also give it an ID. So ID is one, and let's go ahead and create a second customer as well. ID of two, name is Sal Brown, and Sal is in the tech industry. All right, so we have some data. Now, if you're working with TypeScript, these functions are going to have a return type that we can use, which is just called get static props, which will be imported from next. And you'll just put that after a colon, and they are actually using the arrow function syntax here, which I'm going to be using for the Next.js content. So we will copy this and we will import get static props from next. So we'll start with that, get static props. And then I will replace this function here with the arrow equivalent and move the closing curly brace down to the bottom so everything looks good. Now to actually get this data 
inside of our component, it's going to be sent into props. So we could use props here and then console log props. Taking a look at the site, you will see the customer data right here. So that's how we can access the data. Or we can destructure, keep things a little bit cleaner so we don't have to use props throughout our code. So for that, what we'll do is we will destructure the customer's property off of props. And it says property customers does not exist on type object. So I'm gonna take a moment to talk a little bit about types here. What we're gonna do is we're going to define a customer type. So when we have this array of customers, we can say what type this is with the as keyword and say this is a customer array. And then we will define that customer type. So we'll say type customer and define the expected properties of ID being a number, the name being a string, and industry being a string. And then lastly, taking a quick peek at the documentation, there is this infer get static props type, which they will set the type of the props passed in. So infer get static props type, type of get static props. So let's try this out. We will scroll down to our component and say this is from infer get static props type. And then inside angle brackets, we will define what type to infer from, to which we will say type of get static props. So now you should be able to use customers directly without having to prefix it with props. So yeah, that was an insane amount of typing just to save us four characters. But also in theory, TypeScript should know that this is a customer array. And now what we can do is we can map through this data. So after the H1, we will say customers.map and this will have an arrow function. We will define each customer to be of type customer and then we will display their information. So first we will say customer.name and then we'll copy this line and paste it twice more. And then we'll do customer.industry and customer.id. Then this entire thing will need surrounded. Let's go ahead and surround it with a div. So open the div and then close the div and then we will just return this div. All right, so save. Let's take a look at our site. And there we go, we got John Smith is in the restaurant industry, his ID is one. Sal Brown, tech industry, ID two. Now, if we view page source, this information should be in here, which is great for SEO and allows us to serve this as a static file. That is all I got in this episode. Definitely stay tuned for the next one. I think what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be fetching data from an API so we can show that this concept still works even if that data is retrieved from another location and it's not just hard coded in our JavaScript code here. Definitely appreciate you watching this video and stay tuned. Looking forward to what's coming next.